Welcome to the online series of lectures for AP World History at Parkway North. I'm Scott Nilsson, and I'm presumably your teacher. If I'm not, that's okay too. This course covers the last 10,000 years of history, and this lecture covers all the stuff before that. It's appropriate, I suppose, to begin at the beginning, which, historically speaking, requires us to go to Africa. There are some competing claims, but the best guess of archaeology right now is that the earliest beings that we could more or less call human were first located in Africa. Eastern Africa, actually, in an area called the Great Rift Valley, which is where two tectonic plates are pulling away from each other. The valley created in the space between them, it's like the opposite of mountains. When plates crash into each other, land goes up in the form of mountains. When they pull apart, they create valleys. This valley is where the first humans were doing their thing. What we mean by humans and doing their thing is a really interesting question, and one that has lots of different sub-questions associated with it. When did we become human, as we recognize it now? What were we before, and how did we get from point A to point B? Archaeologists have found evidence of hominids, which are great apes that are humans and their ancestors, stretching back to 4.4 million years ago. This is Ardi, who has the title for oldest hominid at the moment, 1.2 million years older than her nearest competitor. This is an artist's depiction of what Ardi might have looked like, and I think it's safe to say that we wouldn't consider her human as such. Over the last 4.4 million years, there have been various interesting processes that have led us from Ardi to something that we would more or less consider anatomically human. For our purposes, though, the AP doesn't care, even a little bit. If you want to know more, take an anthropology or an archaeology class. Like I said, it's fascinating stuff, but not something we have to deal with at all. So, best guesses from archaeologists, then, more or less, with big fudge factors built in. First, creatures were running around that were more or less anatomically human about 200,000 years ago. Maybe. There are fights about this. Second, those creatures began to leave Africa about 70,000 years ago. Maybe. There are fights about this, too. Third, humans became what is called behaviorally modern about 50,000 years ago. This means they could think symbolically, express cultural creativity, and, perhaps most important, develop and use language. Language is super incredibly important to understate it. Fourth, humans spread to all of Africa, Asia, Europe, and Australia by about 40,000 years ago. 30,000 years ago, if you want to play it safe. Specifics as to dates as to who got where when get very controversial very quickly. And if you want even more controversy, try to find out when humans reached the Americas. Probably the movement started about 17,000 years ago, crossing from Northeast Asia to Alaska. The traditional view, which is shown on this map, is that humans chased big game across the land bridge connecting the two continents, and then spread slowly across the Americas. The problem is that the archaeological record might not support that. Uh, people pop up on South American coasts about a thousand or so years before they should. The competing theory is that people didn't cross over land, but instead spread in boats along the coast, which would explain why they reached the Chilean coast when they did. The problem is that there's essentially no archaeological support for this at all, since the coastline they would have traveled is now 100 meters or so below the ocean surface. Since it's under the sea, this makes it hard to confirm anything at all. Ultimately, though, by about 11,000 years ago, humans had spread over the six major continents. Interestingly, some really remote islands, like Easter Island and Hawaii, weren't populated by humans until less than a thousand years ago, which we'll talk about in a couple months. The stuff the AP really cares about starts about 10,000 years ago, with the advent of agriculture. That's the stuff for our next lecture. But before we go there, let's make three last points about your average human who was kicking around, oh, let's say, 10,001 years ago. First, humans used tools. This is nothing new. Hominids have used stone tools for at least two million years. 
but through developing tools made not only of stone, but also of wood and bone and leather and clay and reeds and whatever else they had available, humans were able to adapt to their environments. This allowed them to live in all sorts of different climates, from the frigid Arctic ice to the sweltering tropical jungles. Adaptation is everything. Second, humans used fire. Again, this is nothing new, since we have evidence of cooked food going back 1.9 million years or so, and its use became widespread somewhere between 50 and 100,000 years ago. Fire is really nifty, though. You can use it to cook food, obviously, and you can use it to warm yourself. Uh, but you can also use it in as an aid in hunting. It's easier to kill things if you know where they're going, and pretty much everything runs away from fire. So you start a series of fire to drive your prey into your trap, and then you eat hearty that night. Fires at camps at night also provide protection against predators and provide a central organizing feature of your campground, which is important because, third, humans organize themselves into small groups. Think kinship bands. The food available through hunting and foraging simply wouldn't support a greater population than a small group. These groups, though, probably had affiliations with other groups, think familial clans, and friendly exchanges happened on a non-infrequent basis between bands and clans. People traded for goods they needed, shared ideas and technologies, and swapped people, usually to bring new husbands or wives into the band. Okay, the action really starts next time with the advent of agriculture. Planting and harvesting food changes the game entirely and makes everything else possible.